All right, so I'm about to go ahead and get started. Okay, so my name is Sasha Monet. Happy Saturday, happy Sabbath. Welcome to House of Prayer Ministries. It is a beautiful day on today, but it's super, 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 super hot. So, um, welcome to my broadcast. Um, I was just looking on my, over my notes, waiting for a few people to join me, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, on today, well, what is today? Today is Saturday, June 24th. Saturday, June 24th, 2003. And I have a, um, a warning for prophets and for pastors on today. Now, this message right here, this is a hard message to preach because it is a warning message and it is a rebuke, okay? And some people may say, well, who is she to rebuke somebody? But um, that's what I'm here to do, okay? Um, this is a warning and a rebuke. That's what this is. So, um, forgive me, like, when I come on here, if I seem, if I seem angry or if I seem mad. It's not that I'm angry or that I'm mad because I'm neither of those things. It's just, it's just that I'm passionate. And, um, the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me about, you know, not speaking those things that he tell me to speak consistently. So, that's what I, why I've been trying to show up lately and come on here consistently because, I will oftentimes procrastinate and put off those things that he tell me to address. And so I'm just, you know, learning how to be obedient and be, um, you know, just learning how to be obedient and say, you know, those things that he gives me to share with the people. And like I said, bear with me because this is not an easy message to give. It's very hard. But it's needed. And I know that it's needed because of the things that I see and hear. But it's needed because of the urgency that I, I feel um, the Father to tell me to come on today and to do this message. And the reason how I know that I'm supposed to do it and say it is because I don't want to. The Bible says that many are called, few are chosen. And one way how you know that if you're chosen is if you're doing those things that pleases God and saying those things that he wants you to say, doing those things that, that he wants you to do, but you don't necessarily want to. But because of your fear of him and your obedience to him, you do it anyway, despite if you want to or despite how you feel. So that, that's one way to know like if you're chosen, right? Because you do those things that's pleasing to God. Because trust me, I didn't want to come on here because this is not an easy message to preach. But it's needed and I'm going to be obedient. So I'm going to do it because the Father told me to, okay? So don't shoot the messenger. But hear what um, the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So once again, this is a warning to pastors and to prophets, okay? Now, y'all know I love to give scripture. So I got a lot of scripture on today, but I got to hurry up because I got to go to work. So y'all know how I do. Give me a, do me a favor. If you come in late, just go back and watch the replay from the beginning so you can know what the message was about, okay? I don't fear men, but I fear God, okay? So I'm going to be coming first and foremost from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. And everything that I say on today, is gonna I'm going to back it up with scripture, okay? I'm going to back it up with scripture. Also, I wanted to say this when I was talking about if I seem angry or aggressive. I'm not angry or aggressive, but I left this part out. Think about this. Anytime you declare um, what the Lord wants you to speak or you um, doing a prophetic message and it's a rhema word, meaning that it's a right now word, what the Lord is saying right now. He can speak through many people at the same time, but I'm just saying he's speaking through me right now. This is what he put on my heart and in my spirit for me to address. But anytime you decree or declare a prophetic word or a, a prophetic warning to people, you have to say it with boldness and with authority because number one, if you don't say it with boldness and authority, 
nobody will take you serious okay nobody will take you serious and number two when you speaking you have to speak it with boldness and authority because you have to declare it in all the earth right when moses went to go tell pharaoh to let god's people go moses didn't go to pharaoh like okay pharaoh um um god said let his people go no when he went and addressed pharaoh he had to do it with boldness and with authority and with power okay he had to go in there and put some bass in his voice and let pharaoh know that he went playing and that, and that um and that god wasn't playing uh -oh. Oh, I got a message saying that my phone was too hot. Okay, so I'm going to have to take it down out the window. Ooh, it's hot out here. Okay, maybe it won't cut off. Let's see. So, I'm going to be coming from uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. And I'm going to try to make this quick because my phone was overheating. But it says, And he gave some apostles prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers so this is talking about the gifts of the gifts of the spirit or the gifts that that god gave to his people and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers um sometimes people will often operate in more than one gift okay and that's perfectly fine and then in verse 12, it says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of edifying of the body of Jesus Christ. Okay? So in verse 13, it goes on to say, Till we can all come in unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the, of the stature of the fullness of Yahushua. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and from and carried away about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereabout, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So in verse 14 is talking about the children or the people of God being carried it's talking about the children being tossed to and from and carried about with every wind of doctrine. So it's so many doctrines that a lot of pastors and prophets are teaching now nowadays. That's not really sound doctrine. So that's what I want to address on today. And then it goes on to say, with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they dis whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Okay, so it's a lot of false pastors and, fa and false prophets out here that's lying and waiting to deceive many, okay? Then, and then verse 15 goes on to say, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head of, of Jesus Christ. Your Bible says Jesus Christ. So then in verse 16, it goes on to say, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love so in this verse right here is saying that when it's talking about the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth so it's talking about the body okay the body of believers working together together for the edification of the people or the or the edification of the saints okay according to the effectual working in the measure of every part make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love so we're supposed to edify in love okay so that's why he gave some gifts to pastors some gifts to apostles some gifts to uh teachers evangelists and prophets because we're supposed to work together as a body as with um your natural and your physical body your body parts work together to to function 
so it's supposed to be the same way in the body of christ okay in the body of the messiah to um to accomplish the will of god okay but when you have people that say they are pastors or, or that say they are prophets and they're comp compromising okay compromising sin they're pacifying the people then the body cannot fully function okay if that makes sense okay so edify i talked briefly about edifying in verse what was that in verse 16 where it says according to the effectual working and the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love so we're talking about edifying the people in love so if i come on here and i'm um tearing people down and i'm condemning people then that means that i would not be doing it in love but if i come on here and i take my time and i explain and i try to you know tear down lies and things like that but try to build people up with truth and do it in a loving way then that's edification in a loving way so what does it mean to edify the definition of edify is to instruct and improve especially in moral and religious knowledge okay i'm gonna read that one more time to edify means to instruct and improve especially in moral and religious knowledge okay another def definition or another synonym is to uplift also to enlighten and inform so that's what i try my best to do to uplift people to enlighten them and to inform them of the truth and things that um are going on in the world and things that are not true to 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 inform people okay also another definition is to construct to build up or establish okay so we're supposed to establish truth to build people up but we're also supposed to correct and reprove and rebuke which that's what i'm doing now rebuking okay a lot of people have um the wrong idea about prophecy prophecy is just not to declare to decree and declare something but it's to um it's to do multiple things but i'll get into that in a minute i'm trying to hurry up because i have to go to work and also it's hot and my phone is i hope it's not overheating so galatians chapter 1 verse 6 says i marvel this is paul speaking paul wrote the book of galatians and it says i marvel that ye are are so soon removed from him that call you in the grace of Yahushua to another gospel. So that's what's going on in the world today. Another gospel is being preached. Let me crank up my car for a second. So hopefully my phone will cool out. A um another gospel is being preached, okay? So Paul is saying in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, he's saying, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you in the grace of Yahushua to another gospel. Okay. Then it goes on in verse 7 and it says, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, so y'all know I use Yahushua and Jesus interchangeably so that you'll know who I'm talking about, okay? But verse 7 says, this gospel that's being preached, okay, even in Paul's day, okay, but I can use this because it speaks to today. It speaks to what's going on today. So in verse 7 it says, which really is no gospel at all. So all this decreeing and declaring and the blessings of the Lord make it rich and stuff like that. Paul is speaking to today also and he's saying it's really no gospel at all. So verse 7 says, which, really, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion, okay, and are trying to pervert the gospel of Yahushua. So that's what's being, that's what's happening. The uh, the real gospel is being uh, perverted, okay? Then in verse 8 it says, But even if we or in, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach another gospel other than the one we preach to you, 
let them be a curse. So Paul is speaking to whoever he's speaking to. And he's saying that, hey, 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 if anybody come to you and preach another gospel other than what we have preached to you, then let that man or let that woman be a curse. And they probably said men because women weren't preaching back then. But, um, yes, Paul is saying, no, don't let nobody come to you and preach another gospel. Preach the whole truth and nothing, and nothing but, the, but the truth. And what amazes me is that how the Bible can be so big and so thick, but pastors usually only go to certain books and only stick to certain, you know, chapters or certain verses in the books. But it's 66, it's 66 books in the in the Bible, not counting the, the omitted books and the apocryphal. Okay? So in verse 9, it goes on to say, As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you another gospel other than what you accepted, let them be a curse. So Paul goes on to, to reiterate what he just said in verse 8. He reiterates it again in verse 9, okay? So in verse 10, it says, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of, y'all know that word, Jesus Christ, okay? So in verse 10, Paul is talking about people pleasing. And that's what I see a lot of people pleasing um, in these churches and in people's ministry. People are trying to please people and not trying to please God, okay? So that's why I'm on here to review. Now, again, I'm coming from Galatians chapter 1 verses, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through, through 12, but I'm on verse 10, and I'm going to read that again, and this is not me speaking, but this is Paul speaking, and Paul says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings, or God, or am I trying to please people, if I was still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Jesus Christ, okay? So that's what I see a lot of people, a lot of people pleasing. I see a lot of people trying to uh, please the people in the congregation, but they're not trying to please God, okay? And we should not be people pleasers. So in verse 11, it goes on to say, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preach is not of human origin. So Paul is saying, the real gospel that he preaches is not from human origin, but it's from God, okay? Mean, meaning he ain't leaving nothing out. He, he's preaching and he's teaching what the Most High told him to preach, okay? And then it goes on to say in verse 12, I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by the revelation from Yahushua, okay? Who, who you may know as Jesus Christ. So... What I want to say or what I want to address on today is another gospel is being preached, okay? And it's not authentic. It's not the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's been watered down, okay? So hear me on today. Another gospel is being preached. And it's not pleasing to the most high, but it's, it's pleasing the people because the real gospel is being watered down and being diluted to please the people. But we're not supposed to people please, we're supposed to please the most high God, okay? People have it twisted. So all this talking about your harvest and your breakthrough and it's your winning season and the blessings of the Lord make it rich and it's open door season. And I decree and I declare that is not biblically sound doctrine, okay? Not at all, okay? When Yahushua was here on the earth and he was preaching and he was teaching, okay? When he was out in the streets, which a lot of prophets and pastors are afraid to get out and do, they're afraid to come from behind the pulpits and get out here and, and tell these people about all these murdering that they out here doing and everything else under the sun. But anyway, don't let me get off track. But when Yahushua, whom the world calls Jesus Christ, when he was here on the earth preaching and teaching, 
believe me and you can look for yourself in the bible because it's not in there he was not walking around saying i decree and i declare and your blessings are going to overtake you and the blessings of the lord make you rich and it's open door season and your harvest is coming and all of it that is not sound doctrine that is not how you prophesy and that is not you that is not how you pastor people that is not how you feed the sheep that's not sound doctrine that's the other gospel that paul was preaching about where he said if if any man or any angel preaches you another gospel than what you receive from us then let that man be a curse okay so it's another gospel that's being preached and people have it twisted okay this is another gospel all this decreeing and declaring and all this prophesying and it's, it's not sound doctrine okay it's not even biblical you will not find it in the bible where who you call jesus christ okay was walking around saying i decree and declare the blessings of the lord make it rich and, and your blessings are over, gonna overtake you he did not preach nor teach that that is not sound doctrine okay that is not biblically sound okay so let me tell you what Yahushua, whom you call Jesus Christ, let me tell you what he did preach on, okay? What he preached and taught on was repentance, and he taught on sin, and he taught on hell, holiness, and righteousness. That is what the Messiah, that is what he preached on. That is what he teached on. He was not walking around here talking about blessings, the, the blessings of the Lord and all of that. If anybody want to have a, a conversation, not a debate, but a conversation, because I dare any pastor or any prophet to show me in the Bible where who you call Jesus Christ was walking around saying, um, I decree and I declare and uh, God is going to bless you and He's going to open doors for you. It, 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 it don't say none of that. Because God does not bless disobedience and sin. He blesses obedience. Okay? God does not bless sin. So, don't misconstrue what I'm saying. Because I'm not saying that God does not want us to be blessed. Or that he does not us that he don't want us to be well and made whole and healthy and live an abundant life. No, I'm not saying that. God is not opposed to us having a plentiful life. He's not opposed to that at all. But what he is opposed to is sin. And so in order for us to get the blessings of, of God, we need to address the sin problem and confront the sin and repent and turn back to God so that he can bless us so how is it that god is doing all this blessing but it's all this sin it's all these unnecessary killings and unnecessary murders in birmingham how how is it something is not adding up to me okay so yahushua whom the world calls jesus christ he taught on repentance he taught on hell he taught on holiness and righteousness he, he was not preaching and teaching all this fluff that a lot of y'all is teaching and preaching fluff because that's what it is fluff okay ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 says what has been will be again what has been done will be done again there is nothing new under the sun so basically that this this uh feel good messages that paul was talking about in the book of galatians that i gave to you about any man preaching another gospel the Bible say in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 that there is nothing new under the sun. So what has been done will be again. Basically, you know, all this decreeing and declaring and stuff that y'all doing, all this watered down gospel that y'all preaching. Basically what I'm saying and what Paul is saying is that it's not new because nothing new is under the sun. Okay, everything that has been done will be again according to Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9. Okay, but the problem is people don't want to hear sound doctrine. They don't want to hear it, but I'm going to back up what I say with scripture. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 4, starting at verse 3. And it says, 
for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, they will heap up teachers who will please them by telling them only what their itching ears want to hear. Okay, so we live in these times right now. That is all that people want to hear is what God is going to do for them and how God is going to bless them and how God is going to get them a new job and a new car and a new house. But how is that when there's so much adultery and there's so much fornication and so many, so much murdering and stuff? How is that because God don't bless mess? Okay, I'm going to read that again. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3 and it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, they will heap up teachers who will please them by telling them only what their itching ears want to hear. Okay, so that's what we see now. That's what we see being done now. People are prophesying and telling the people what they want to hear. Okay, because people don't want to hear sound doctrine. They don't want to hear what's going to get them into them pearly gates because the pastors at these funerals and stuff, he teaching that you can live any kind of way and you can just make it on into heaven. That God is just allowing any and everybody in there without repentance and without being born again. That's not true. Everybody is not making it into heaven and somebody lying at these funerals because the Bible say that brawl is the way to destruction and narrow is the way to eternal life and few people find it. So you tell me how somebody can die in a shootout and they did everything that was not pleasing to God and they made it into the kingdom. You tell me how a holy God is going to let gang bangers and thieves and murderers and adulterers and all these people that y'all stand going to, going to heaven at these funerals and, and church services, how God is just going to let them come on in and everybody going to get their wings. No, they're not. Not if they don't repent, they're not. The Bible say God is holy. He said, be holy for I am holy. So according to the scripture, they say, bro, is the way to destruction and narrow is the way to eternal life. And few people find it. Then that means most people take the, the broad, the broad path, which is the way to destruction, which is basically the way to hell. And that's what most people are on their way to, because a lot of people not repenting. Okay. A lot of people don't have a repentant heart. You got to be born again to go to heaven, okay? It's a requirement. But y'all pastors, people don't have a good idea of what that really means because these pastors are not teaching on it. They're not teaching true rep repentance. So I rebuke you on today and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, okay? Warning comes uh, before destruction. Okay, so in Jeremiah chapter 14, it says, Then the Lord said to me, the prophets are, are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and the delusions of their own minds. So this is what the Lord told Jeremiah. Okay? He said, then the Lord said to me. Now you can find what I'm saying in Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 14. And it reads again, Then the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and delusions of their own minds. So just because the Most High was speaking to Jeremiah, remember that the Bible is a living word. So just because he was speaking to Jeremiah don't mean that this verse don't apply to what's going on today. The devil is a lie. It still applies. Okay, because it's still happening now. Remember, there's nothing new under the sun. And then in verse 15, it goes on to say, Therefore, this is what the Lord says about the prophets who are prophesying in my name. I did not send them, yet they are saying, No sword or famine will touch this land. Those same prophets will perish by sword and famine. Okay? And it's going to be famine here. It's, it's going to be famine that's going to come here. And sword, wars, and everything else. Okay? But how come there's so many prophets but they ain't they ain't prophesying on that? They ain't prophesying on the judgment that, that is coming. Okay? They ain't prophesying. They ain't touching that. So... <laughs> I'm almost done, y'all, because I got to get ready to go to work. 
But I'm going to read that again. And this comes from Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 15. Well, starting at verse 14. And it says, Then the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them. So it's a lot of self-proclaimed prophets out here, okay? He said, I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and the delusions of their own minds. Okay? Therefore, in verse 15, therefore, this is what the Lord says about the prophets who are prophesying in my name. I did not send them, yet they are saying no sword or famine will touch this land. Those same prophets will perish by sword and famine. Okay? So, one reason that the prophets and the pastors are not teaching or preaching on sin is because they are guilty themselves. Okay? Which means that they're not living how they're supposed to be living. Okay? And that's, that's what, it's, it's three reasons right now that I'm going to give you the reason why these pastors and why some of these false prophets won't teach on sin and won't teach on repentance. And number one is either they're guilty themselves and they know that they can't correct nobody and rebuke and reprove nobody because they ain't living right themselves behind closed doors. They're not actually walking this thing out. Okay. Or number two, they don't want to offend people. But the Bible says, follow me. This is what Jesus Christ told Peter. He said, follow me and I will make you a fisherman of men. So pastors, what are you fishing for? Are you fishing for money or are you fishing for men? Because when, when Jesus Christ told Peter, follow me, I'll make you a fisherman of men. That mean that he was going to teach him and show him how to disciple people into the kingdom. How, how to go catch people instead of, because Peter was a fisherman. So he was teaching him, Peter, I, I, okay, put lead a fish behind in the sea and follow me. And I'm going to show you how to fish for men. How to disciple men in it. But it seems like the pastors is, is fishing for the money instead of men. Okay? So number two is they don't want to offend people. But if you're going to be in ministry, it's your job to offend people. But in a loving way, you're supposed to offend them with the word of God, which is the truth, which is the sword. And the sword is supposed to do what? Cut. It's supposed to cut. The word of God is supposed to cut you. It's supposed to convict you in your sin so that you can have a, a repentant heart and be born again. Because that's how you go to heaven. That's how you go to heaven. And the third way is they want your money. So that's why a lot of these pastors and prophets are not teaching on sin. Because number one, they're guilty themselves. Number two, they don't want to offend people. Or number three, they want your money. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So you're not supposed to be dependent on the people for money, okay? Because God is supposed to sustain you, not the people. And I understand that the church has bills and things that need to be paid, but my point is what I'm saying is, preach on hell and repentance while you passing the collection plates around. Because there's a lot of people that's giving but they're not being born again. They're not repenting. Okay. So we should be teaching people about sin and repentance in hell. But I don't hear no messages on it. All I hear is blessings and faith and and prosperity and wealth and good health. That's all I hear and see. Okay. And um in verse let me see. So in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 it says But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be co-signed to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. And the reason why I share that scripture is because there's a lot of pastors and a lot of prophets they think that they're going to heaven, but a lot of it's going you're gonna see a lot of pastors and a lot of prophets in hell. And I'm gonna back up what I'm saying with scripture. Okay. Because what did I just say? I just gave you three reasons why pastors and prophets won't teach on hell. And I said that number one, and in no specific order, but I said that number one, they either guilty themselves, number two, they don't want to offend people, and number three, they just want people money. 
But in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, it said, but the cowardly. So that's being what? That's being a coward. So it don't matter what title you have if you're not doing what the Most High told you to do. It don't matter what title you have if you're not prophesying and preaching what he told you to prophesy and preach. Because if you people pleasing, then that means you being cowardly. And let me tell you where the cowardly go. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, it says, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be con con consigned to the fiery lake of the burning sulfur. This is the second death. Okay? So if you're, if you're cowardly and you don't want to offend people and you're not preaching and prophesying and teaching what the Most High tell you to preach and prophesy on, then that's being cowardly. You can't hide behind uh, your title of being a pastor and a prophet. Okay, then Matthew chapter 7 verses 22 through 23 says, Many, okay, hear me. Matthew chapter 7 verses 22 through 23 says, Many will say to me in that day, because remember I said I was going to back up what I said with scripture, right? I said it's going to be a lot of people, a lot of pastors, and a lot of prophets in hell, because they're teaching half truths. They're preaching another gospel that Paul was talking about. So in Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 through 23, because some people got it misconstrued. They think just because they're a prophet and a pastor that they all going to heaven. No, you're not. It's going to be a lot of pastors and prophets that's going to perish, okay? Hear what the word of the Lord is saying. Don't take my word for it. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 through 23. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Okay? For you false pastors and false prophets. Not all, but some. And then it goes on to say in verse 23, it says, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Okay? I'm going to read that one more time because somebody, somebody pastor and somebody prophet needs to hear that matthew chapter 7 verses 22 through 23 i want you to go look this up for yourself because a lot of people are hiding behind their titles and they think just because they're a pastor and they think just because they got a congregation and a big following and they popular and all this stuff they think that they're going to heaven just because they're a prophet and they're a pastor but if you're not teaching people about murder and you're not teaching and preaching on fornication and you're not teaching and preaching on adultery and you're not teaching and preaching against the lgbtq the alphabet community if you're not preaching against all these sin problems out here then you're not going to heaven i don't care who you are i don't care where you live i don't care about your status i don't care about your income i don't care about what kind of car you drive if you are not warning people to repent if you i don't care if you're a pastor or a prophet if you are not warning people to repent of their sins then Matthew chapter 7 verses 22 through 23 is talking to you and it says many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name okay for all you self-proclaimed prophets that's preaching half truths and in thy name have we not cast out devils and in thy name there are many wonderful works and then will I profess unto them look at listen at what he's going to say to them on judgment day He's going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Okay? Follow you self-proclaimed prophets out there that's not preaching and teaching the whole truth. Okay? Okay? Because you're more concerned about your pockets and your purses and your bank accounts than people's soul. Yes, I rebuke you. I rebuke you on today. Now, if the shoe fit, then don't wear it. If you know you preaching and teaching the whole truth and nothing but the truth, and you teaching and preaching everything that the Most High is telling you to say, and you teaching people to repent of their sins, then I'm not talking to you. But a hit dog will holler. So if you offended, then that means, hey, you, you ain't offended with me. You mad at God, and you're mad at what the Word of God says. I'm just a messenger. I'm just reiterating what's in Scripture and what the Lord told me to speak. Okay? Don't shoot the messenger. Second Peter verses... Uh, Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 and it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance so that includes pastors and prophets too you need to repent 
Because you know if you've been teaching on sin and the Most High has been quiet and he's been silent and he's been sitting back and it's been a lot of sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning going on. But it's been a lot of uh, prophet lying on blessings and uh, prosperity and good health and wealth and all of this. How was that? Okay. So he, the Lord ain't slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but he's long suffering. Willing that all should come to repentance. All. Everybody. Everybody. Okay? And remember this. Remember this. Because I'm about to get ready to go. Remember this. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 says. Beware of false prophets. Which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. It's a lot of ravening wolves. It's a lot of false prophets out here. Okay? I don't want to call no names out. These prosperity uh, preachers, a lot of them that's on TV names, because on TV, because I don't want to get this video flagged. But a lot of these uh, pastors that y'all looking up to, that's in millionaire status and stuff, and they popular, and they on TV and stuff, a lot of them are false. And they, they in the Matthew in uh, in Matthew chapter seven verse fifteen, it calls them uh, ravenous wolves. Okay, and it says in Matthew chapter seven verse fifteen, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. So they're gonna look nice and they're gonna dress nice and they're gonna smile, but the Bible says, but inwardly they, they are ravening wolves. Okay. Which means they're going to tell you what you want to hear. And they're going to skin and grin and smile in your face and get your money. But, but you're going to perish right along with them if you don't repent. Okay? Pastors, there's, in, uh, there's Freemasons and in fraternities and sororities and all this order of Eastern Star for the prophetesses and females and stuff that's in this these sororities and fraternities and stuff you need to repent because the problem is with a lot of these freemason pastors they won't preach on sin and teach on sin because i guess they're not allowed to because of these allegiances that they have made to these secret societies that they're in okay so if you a pastor or a first lady or Whatever these organ these secret organizations that you may be a part of, and you cannot preach and teach on certain things because of your allegiance or your pledge that you made to these secret societies, then you need to come out of that and you need to repent. Okay, I, I don't know. I haven't studied a whole lot about these secret societies and things like that. So I'm sorry that I gotta give a generic warning as far as that is concerned, because I haven't done my due diligence on that. But whatever Freemason or fraternity or sorority or whatever oath, if you're taking any types of oaths, okay, or you made any type of allegiance or any organization, anything, any type of oath or, or pledge any allegiance or anything like that, then you need to come out of there and you need to repent. Because you're not even, first of all, we don't supposed to take no oaths. And we don't supposed to pledge our allegiance to anything except to the God up in the sky. Okay? And another thing, you can't preach and teach on what the people need to really hear because you can't. Because you're a part of these secret organizations and stuff that you're a part of. So you need to come out of that and you need to repent. Okay? Because is it worth your soul? Is it worth your soul perishing at the end of the day? Okay? It's a lot of pastors that's compromising and there's a lot of prophets that's compromising. Okay, and another thing before I go, the gospel, remember this, pastors and prophets, the gospel is to be told, not sold. It's a lot of people that's exploiting people for money, and people are perishing. Okay, they perishing right along in their sins, because all this offering and collection plates is being passed around. But it's a lot of people that's living in habitual sin and y'all not warning the people and teaching them on it. You're supposed to teach and preach against that. Now, yeah, you can't make people do what they want to do. I understand it. By all means, I understand it. Because at the end of the day, people are going to do what they want to do. And at the end of the day, we all have to give an account. 
okay we all gonna give an account but it don't matter if they don't listen when you preach or teach on the sin that's between them and god that's up to them but despite what i'm saying is if they listen or if they don't listen you're supposed to see a warn them and teach on sin and repentance in heaven and hell despite whether they listen or not because if you did what you, what you're supposed to do and preach on what you're supposed to preach on then we probably wouldn't see as many things as we see out here all this corruption and stealing and killing and fornicating and murdering and adultery and all this ungodly stuff okay but y'all ain't preaching on it and it bothers me that i see so many unnecessary murders but these pastors not not preaching on gun violence and stuff so they should raise some some antennas to people why is it a church on every corner but there's so many killings so many un unnecessary killings then that goes to show you that people that these pastors and these prophets they're not teaching on murder they're not teaching on or preaching against murder and killing but the bible say that shall not kill so you're supposed to, to preach and teach against those things because people are supposed to feel convicted in their sins okay we don't condemn people but the word of god is supposed to convict them but if you're not preaching against it then we're not going to see a change the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and, res and expect different results. That's my definition of insanity. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing. So to preach the same thing and to teach the same thing and to prophesy the same thing over and over again and expect different results. That is the definition of insanity. Okay? And also, I'm going to say that again. Know this. The gospel is to be told, not sold. Okay, all this, every time you go live, and if the shoe don't fit, then I ain't talking to you. But listen, Yahushua was not walking around here selling the gospel. It's to be told, not sold. So all this, every time you go live, you asking people for money, asking them to, to cash out, posting your cash out and your zeal and all this. But the people perishing in their sin. Okay, you need to repent. Because the gospel is to be told, not sold. It's not, it's not the money that you receive. And I understand people taking out their time or their day and things like that. And they, okay, I get all that. And the church, I, I get that. The church needs funds and things like that. But what I'm saying is, don't exploit people for money okay especially if especially if you're not preaching and teaching against sin and you're not teaching and preaching repentance okay stop exploiting people for money okay stop it okay now i don't care who get mad but if the gospel is to be told not sold okay it's to be told not sold and if you ain't teaching on hell and repentance but the thing is that ought to make people think. Because the reason why they taking up all these collection plates and love offerings and all this stuff. But we don't see no change in our community. But they, they ain't teaching, teaching against that because they don't want people to stop giving. But while people is giving, they perishing and they dying in their sins and they going to hell. Because the people who's supposed to feed the people, like the pastors. Because that's your job to feed the sheep. They're not teaching on sin and repentance. So before you take up an offering plate you need to make sure that you teaching on what people need to hear teach sound doctrine teach on sin and repentance okay because what good is all these decreeing and declaring and the, the blessings of the lord and make it rich and prophesying good things things that people want to hear if people perishing in their sins what good is that okay but you're gonna have to give an account we're all gonna have to give an account and remember this because there are some it's some authentic it's some real prophets out here who do really have a, a gift and god did call them but when you compromise sin because you don't want to offend people and you want to be popular and you want to keep receiving people's money then you you won't teach on certain things so that means you leaving something out you're not really teaching and prophesying what the lord is telling you to prophesy and know this true prophets who have really been called by god they don't really want to do the job true prophets and it's no shade to anybody but true you will always know a true prophet because true prophets is not going to teach what's popular 
True prophets are going to teach on repentance. True prophets are going to teach on heaven and hell. True prophets are going to um, warn people about living holy and righteous. True prophets are going, to, are, are going to teach on things that the people don't want to hear. Not what the people want to hear. And that's how you know a true prophet who have really been called and sent and commissioned by God. Okay, because true prophecy is not just I decree and I declare. No, that's not a prophet. That's a motivational speaker. That's a motivational speaker, especially if the people that you prophesy to living in habitual hell. I mean, living in habitual sin. That is a motivational speaker. True prophecies, true prophets don't announce and broadcast that they're a prophet because they know what comes with the territory. They know what comes with it. They know that people are going to come up against them, that their people will attack their ministry, that they will attack them and criticize them the first chance that they get. So they don't announce and broadcast that that's what they are. True prophets don't go around announcing that because they know what comes with their territory. And plus they don't have to because people will see it. And true prophets, they don't really want to do the job. They don't really want to teach and speak on what, what God told them to say and do because people ain't going to want to hear it. And it's going to come with all kind of backlash and, and everything. Okay? So, God is about to separate the true prophets from the false prophets. And one way how he going to do that, and you going to know who's real and who's fake because... It's going to come with persecution. The real and the true prophets are going to get persecuted because they're the ones who are going to be teaching and preaching what God is really saying about sin and repentance and living righteous and living holy. And the false ones are the ones that's, that's a true prophet, but they're compromising because they don't want to be uh, persecuted and they want everybody to like them. Well, God is dealing with you too, okay? Because remember this. Because there are some true prophets. But you ain't really saying everything that God wants you to say. And I know you're not. I know you're not. And Romans chapter 11 verse 29 says, For the gifts and the calling of God come without repentance. So that means that you can have a gift. That you can be a true prophet. And that you can truly hear from God. But if you withholding and you holding back. And you not really saying and teaching on what God is really telling you to preach and teach on. You not teaching people about sin. You not warning people about hell. Then that means you compromising. But the gifts of God come without repentance. So the gifts that God give us. He don't take them back. He not an Indian giver. So whether you use it. Or not. They come without. The gifts of God come without repentance. Okay? They come without repentance. But persecution is going to separate the real from the fake. And you're going to see the real prophets. They're going to be persecuted. And they're going to get all kind of backlash. And people are going to hate them. And people are going to attack them. And people are going to attack their ministry. But those are the ones that you need to listen to. Because the Bible says that broad is the way to destruction. And narrow is the way to eternal life. So, the Bible say this. In Luke chapter 6, verse 26, it says, Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. I'm going to read it again. Luke chapter 6, verse 26. And it says, Woe to you. Anytime you see woe in the Bible, you don't want to see woe. It says, Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what the Bible said? Okay. So woe to all of you prophets out here that's false. And woe to the ones that's compromising. Because it says woe to when all men. So in other words, what they're saying is that if you a true prophet or prophetess, everybody ain't supposed to like you. Everybody ain't supposed to speak well and speak highly of you. Because if they do, that means that you're not teaching the whole truth and in the and there's nothing but the whole truth. That me, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. If if you are a prophet or a pastor and you popular and everybody love you, 
you're not teaching the whole truth and nothing but the whole truth. You are not saying everything that God is telling you to say. You are not preaching on hell and sin and holy. Well, you might be preaching holy living and righteousness, but you ain't teaching on hell. You ain't preaching against fornication. You're not preaching against adultery. You're not preaching against everything that go against the word of God. You're not because the Bible say that in other words, woe to those who speak well of you. So in other words, your ministry is supposed to cause division. You're supposed to have some people over here that like you and, and like what you're preaching and teaching. And then the other half is supposed to hate you or not like you for no reason except for what you're teaching or, or preaching against or either they just don't like you. But if everybody like you and, and you and there's no division, then you're not authentic. You're not being authentic. And you may have a gift because the gifts of God come without repentance. But you're not being authentic. Because know this. Who the Bible, who y'all call Jesus Christ, which his name really is the Yahushua Hamashiach. Remember, his following, he his half of his followers loved him and the other half hated him. Okay, and they wanted to kill him and they wanted to stone him and they said, Give us Barabbas. Okay, give us Barabbas. So, if if your people ain't saying that about you and, and there ain't no division in your ministry, then you are not preaching the whole truth and nothing but the whole truth. You are not preaching against sin. And if you are not a part of the solution, then you are part of the problem. Okay, you're, you're, you're a part of the problem. And know this, we got to stop thinking just because we don't feel no conviction that God is not con may not be convicting us that we're, we're, that we're not walking in error. Because when you have a child, you don't get on to them about every little wrong thing that they do. You don't have time to do that. You're not going nick to nitpick at them about every little thing that they listen to, every little thing that they watch, every little thing that they do all day, all day. No, but that don't mean that you don't see them. That don't mean that you don't hear them. You know, so God is the same way. So we got to stop thinking that just because God ain't convicting us about something, that he is pleased or that he's not seen. Because he cannot convict you of something and he still be seen. That's why we need to be repentant of known and unknown sins. Okay? So stop compromising. Stop compromising. Stop compromising. Okay? I think I have said everything that I wanted to say. Uh, remember that true prophecy is for edification, is for the building up of the saints, is for the perfecting of the saints, okay? This was in love. This was a hard message and a hard word to preach, but it was necessary, okay? Don't shoot the messenger because the Most High told me to come on here and say this. And I ain't the only one that God speaks to. I had temptation. I sin, I fall short, but I repent. And when I repent, I have a true heart. I have a true heart change and a true mind change, okay? Because we all sin. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. All of us, even myself, I'm not perfect. But what I don't do is live in habitual sin. And when I repent, I truly repent. And I truly turn back to God. And I and I I walk this thing out. I live it. How I am in real life is the same way how I come on here. Okay, the things that I used to do, I don't no longer do those things. I understand heaven is real. I understand hell is real. And I understand that most people are going to hell. Okay, that's a sad reality, but it's true. Okay, it's true. And this type of warning and message and preaching and teaching is so necessary. Because you ain't you ain't gonna hear this. Okay, you supposed to feel convicted in your sins. You ain't supposed to go to church and still feel comfortable sinning when you leave. You used to you're supposed to feel conviction. If I get on here and I'm bringing you a word like this and you feel offended, that means that's good. That means I'm doing my job. That means I'm doing. That means I'm speaking what, what the Lord really wants me to speak and, and preach and teach against. So that's good. That's good. Now, I'm not supposed to condemn because there is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. It's a difference in condemnation and conviction. The Holy Spirit will convict you, okay? But Satan will condemn you. We, we're not to condemn. We don't condemn nobody, okay? Because the Bible says, He who is without sin cast the first song. But there's a misconception that we're not supposed to judge, and we are supposed to judge. And in the Bible, it says, Take the speck out your eye so you can see clearly to take the speck out your brother's eye. In other words, that means we can judge, but it's supposed to be righteous judgment. In other words, that means if, if 
people take that scripture out of context. That means if I'm in fornication and you in fornication, that means I can't judge you. But that means if I was in fornication, but I'm not in fornication and you still are, that means, okay, I repented of my sin. I took the speck out my eye. Now I can see clearly to take the speck out your eye. That's what that means. People take that scripture out of context. We are to judge. We are to, to, to righteous judge, though. But we ain't supposed to be involved in against what we judging against, if that makes sense, okay? So, repent, okay? This is in love. If you offended, then that's on you. But I'm going to be obedient, first and foremost, to God. I'm going to do and say what he tell me to say. So, it is what it is. So, I hope you got something out of this. God be blessed. Have a happy Saturday.